It's little, which means it's adorable, but can it perform? I flippin' love tiny little small form factor PCs. They were my favorite videos to work on while I was hosting for Newegg. Been a longtime fan of Intel Nooks, taking small, power efficient laptop style guts and cramming them into a teeny little PC case. But the folks at Geekom sent me over their new mini PC for me to take on a test drive and share my thoughts. And I'm really glad they did. It's so funny, holding a whole computer is a prop. In terms of overall hardware and design, this looks a lot like a Nook, a small little cube of computer I.O. It's powered by an external power lump. Nooks are fun, but they're sold by Intel as bare bone kits. You buy one and you supply your own RAM and storage and you install your own operating system. The hook for Geekom is selling a fully built PC with RAM and an SSD with Windows 11 pre-installed. For the tech inside, Geekom is selling aggressively on price, by offering an older CPU. We have the 8th gen Intel Core i5 quad core with eight thread multi-threading and integrated Iris graphics. The only omission from an Intel Nook that I can find would be a lack of Thunderbolt support. The USB-C on the back here is USB and display out, not full-fledged Thunderbolt. The configuration for the mini PC is pretty decent. I'm using their top option, which has 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD for 549 99. Options start at 8 gig 256 for 440. Plus in the box, not only do you get the PC and the power supply, it's really nice to see an HDMI cable and a mounting bracket to stick the PC to the back of a monitor. It's kind of like a build your own iMac kit. We're not selling at the current bleeding edge, but we're offering up a solid combination of tech guts to reach a lower price point on an imminently capable machine. And the internals are pretty decent. My unit came with Kingston RAM and a Kingston SSD. Even better, the 16 gigabytes was on one stick of RAM, so your other slot is free to double that RAM. You're not throwing out two eight gigabyte sticks to upgrade. Considerations like that help this move to a category of inexpensive instead of just calling it cheap. Compared against my little Core i3 Nook, you can see this case is taller and they're opting for the taller Nook design for folks who might want to pop in a SATA SSD. The bottom of this cage has a bracket to slide in another drive. I mean, you do need to check the clearance because of the little screw mounts, but I would imagine most drives should fit unless they have that obnoxious extra gamer casing some of our older SATA drives used to have. It fits in the palm of your hand. You only need four screws to pop it open. The RAM and storage are upgradable and you can easily go dual drive. This is everything I love about small form factor PCs. You're not baked into one configuration when you buy it. And that's where we transition to cover performance. We are talking about a two and a half generation old CPU. These are laptop guts. It's not so much are there performance limitations, but what are the limits? How far can we go for under $600? And you can go pretty far. I look at these as convenience options to save space. They're easy to pack. If you need a full featured PC, anywhere you might have access to a power outlet. They're practically invisible in office or a behind the TV kind of setup. And our expectations on home use and office use should be framed by that utility. Obviously, if you spend $600 on a full PC tower, that will go farther than $600 in the palm of your hand. But we're not sacrificing much for mainstream use. Intel integrated graphics are plenty capable for most consumption uses. Streaming UHD video off my NAS over Wi-Fi is cake. You know, the little box doesn't even blink on some of my Blu-ray rips. Web browsing, office and document work, even two generations out, a Core i5 is plenty up to the task. You've got to start hitting it with moderately complex Excel workbooks to start seeing some real struggle. But beyond that, we might want to see what else it can do. Say, Maybe you want to edit some video. It's not really great for cutting 4K video. You can do it, but it's not awesome at it. I use the same collection of files and the same cuts, transitions, audio, and watermark as I use to benchmark my phones. It's a one minute 4K timeline and we can see how long that takes to render. Just scrubbing the timeline on 4K video can turn into a slideshow. Rendering off the CPU took 
almost six minutes. And if we render at a similar quality on a modern, premium, expensive phone, and mind you, we're talking about a phone with an MSRP likely around three to $500 more than this PC, that expensive phone can wrap the same project in around 40 seconds. Obviously this isn't oranges to oranges for not being able to use the exact same editing programs, but in terms of practical output, these are the kinds of tasks our mobile processors are getting really good at accomplishing. Now, switching over to GPU rendering improves output speed significantly, where the Geekom can finish in three minutes and 24 seconds. Not quite twice as fast as the CPU render, but significantly faster regardless. So it's totally able to cut a 4K video, but you are looking at an almost four to one render time based on the length of your project at a good bit rate to upload to YouTube. It's not really a strength for this box, but it should be plenty fine to cut some 1080p home videos for your family. A more accessible use for a lot of consumers though, how's it play the games better than I was expecting? Again, we're not turning to integrated graphics for amazeballs gaming. That's never a thing, but a small discrete PC, it handles low power titles a lot better than I was expecting. Like almost last generation console playing fun indie games quality. When really low power PCs like the Azul would choke on games like Tetris Effect, the Geekom is playing this out at 1080p with medium graphic settings at roughly 60 frames per second, eminently playable, even into later speed settings in the game. No issues at all with traditional 2D platforming or indie games like Ape Out. Old classic console and arcade emulation, completely doable. If you wanted to use this as a little arcade box, I think you'd really like that experience. But stepping up to more demanding titles, <laughs> nah, no, that's not it. It's not for that. I still use Control as my main take a look around game, and I couldn't play for long before getting violently motion sick. And this is at 720p with almost every quality set to its absolute lowest. The game still looks pretty good when you're not moving, but it's a slideshow just turning the mouse around, and that's not playable. I haven't even made it to seeing other characters show up on screen. From a scientific standpoint, it is kind of impressive that this hardware can put out around 13 frames per second. That's intellectually interesting. It's not practical to play a game that way. But I should also mention, especially while playing some games, that the Geekom runs quieter than I was expecting it to. Even after a longer run of Tetris, while I can hear the fans sitting right next to it, the output settles into a comfortable constant that TV speakers should easily be able to overpower. You expect a bit more of a whine or like a louder laptop sound, but giving us the extra depth here helps a lot in smoothing out the cooling. All right, starting to wrap this video up, we're, we're landing this plane here. There's a healthy market right now for various home computers at good prices. Taking a step down for compute power helps a lot at reining in the price tag. An 11th gen Core i5 Nook starts at 599. That's for the bare bones kit. Definitely more powerful, but also more expensive. The flip side of this would be looking at the current Mac Mini, but matching the storage means climbing up to $900 brand new. And used prices have fallen pretty hard, but those used Mac Minis are still gonna be more expensive than this Geekom. So if you aren't using that additional compute power, or you're worried about increasing your storage later into the life of this box, it can be worth it to save a little cash on a computer like this up front and upgrade it down the line. Especially especially with some of the changing ideas on using a lower powered PC, like Windows 11 supporting Android apps. <laughs> we still need to see a lot of work on app compatibility, but the few Android apps I've used through Amazon generally performed as well as, or sometimes even better than using Android apps on a more expensive Chromebook. This hardware is about the same as what's inside my Pixelbook Go, only it has better cooling. See, I'm just an absolute sucker for this form factor. It's just a, a cute little brick full of ports and IO, and it's ready for a fairly broad daily driver use. It's a lot of compute potential, and it's not 
gonna hurt the wallet. I will, of course, leave some links down below where you can find more information on the Geekom Mini PC. Maybe shop one of these bad boys online. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been phenomenal. Please keep it up with the bell icons and the sharing. And maybe you might also consider joining the list of names scrolling by on my screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch and the Facebooks and the Instagrams and a revived Flickr account with two photos on it. And I will catch you all on the next review.